Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, I want to talk about a very important subject, and it's kind of a common problem, uh, could be a potentially bad problem, and I think it's just one of those things that something we've been taught in school, and we follow uh, just because it sound, sounded right, and so we went and had to follow that advice, or that recommendation, or that guidance, however you want to call it, and we thought we were good to go. What I want to talk about is how much do you derate your resistors? So let's say you have to dissipate a half a watt. So do you get a one watt resistor so it's derated by 50% You say, hey, that's what I was taught. That's the right thing to do. Well, that's not, at least in my humble opinion, that is not the right way to go. That resistor is going to run so hot, and then probably two years into the field, it's going to burn up. And your nice circuit that you went and spent all your time picking out the right capacitors and the right transistors, maybe GAN FETs, you spent a lot of effort into that design and you're really happy about it. Maybe you built your kit and you're listening to your amplifier and then something starts to smell one day. Well. That resistor, over maybe a couple years time, it's probably going to fail. And it's going to burn your PCB, and it's just not a good thing. So here, I want to show you something here. See this chart? This chart is uh, something you may have seen if you've looked at a derating curve on a resistor data sheet. Okay? What it shows is the percentage of wattage you can use versus temperature. So let's say it's that one watt resistor. So you can use one watt up to 70 C. And after that you have to derate. So if that resistor is like let's say 130 C, well you can go down 50% of the wattage range. So half a watt. So hey, my circuit is never going to be 130 C, so I'm good to go. Half a watt's good. 70 C, yeah, I might be 80, 90 C sometimes. Maybe it get hot. So, yeah, I can't use, I can't make that one watt resistor dissipate one watt. So, okay, 50% sounds good. All right, guys, so if it gets 200 C, I'm out of derating. I can't use anything in that resistor. But, come on, that's super hot temperatures. My circuit's never going to get that hot. Well... Okay, now think about this. Your toaster oven is just a resistive element. It gets hot because of current going through it, right? That's what's going to happen with your resistor. If you, put 50, if you put half a watt in your one watt resistor, run it for a minute. Come back and touch that resistor. I dare you. I want to do it. You're going to burn yourself. I've got a resistor in here that's a problem. And it's a resistor that it shouldn't be a problem. There's no reason for it to burn power. There's three resistors, actually. They're in parallel. If you were around when I described that circuit, I said we had three 1K resistors on each side. Uh, so 333 ohms. And they'll discharge these capacitors we put on the board. And when I, you know, when I kind of talked through the circuit and I was looking at it, I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. They're big resistors. They look like at least two watt. I think they're actually three watt resistors. And I thought, ah, oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't understand why they needed three three watt resistors or even two watt resistors to uh, discharge capacitors. If you need to discharge that cap quickly, yeah, you're going to dissipate some power on it. But you don't need to dissipate it quickly. That thing, you know. What if it took a minute for the discharge? Well, what I did is I, I said, okay, what if I end up putting four 10 millifarad capacitors on this board? If I do that, I have, uh, and I have three 1K resistors on there, I come out with 1.23 watts, 1.225. So, you know, just over 1.2 watts. Well, that's why they gave me a three watt resistor. It's rated, I'm not even putting half the power through it. So from that chart, I'm good to go. Well, what that chart doesn't tell you 
is that chart says, hey, if your ambient temperature, if your temperature on your resistors, at uh, this temperature, you can use this percentage power. What that chart doesn't tell you is how hot your resistor is going to get given a certain level of power dissipation on that resistor. And that's what's important. So that curve, you can't stop at that curve. You have to go down and look at the other curve. Now, in college, I remember saying D-rate 50%. I remember getting out in the real world, well, even doing my audio kit, amplifier kits back in the day, and realized right away that that's not right. A lot of people are not doing power circuits, and so they never really come up on that. And I think a lot of resistors are derated well below the 50%, so it's never an issue. But I could just imagine every resistor on the board being derated at 50%. That board would be scolding hot. The way I found this is I was running some tests. I was going to do this test this video on these capacitors, I was going to show you how how much capacitance we need to get you know with the given load. Well, as I'm sitting here just kind of getting things set up, I, I'm smelling something. And then I turn off the power and I feel down there and I had it left on a little bit longer than I have before. It takes you know 10, 15 seconds, I think, 20 seconds for before it starts really getting hot. And then you can start smelling something after say a minute. So then I put temperature probe down there. Well first I start touching really tentatively and found what, what was getting hot and I put a temperature probe on I'm like holy cow I did a quick calculation and realized yeah that is a lot of power 1 watt 1.2 watts on a 3 watt resistor okay I'm going to show you another curve alright guys back to my board what I did is I transposed another curve that's provided I'm going to show you these curves in the data sheet, okay? So I just put them together. Basically what it shows is that at 1 watt, which is about 33% of a 3 watt resistor, it's going to rise 60C. So if you start off at, say, 20 degrees ambient, you're going to be up around 80C at that point. It's pretty hot, right? So you can see why, you know, I recommend running resistors around 25% or no more uh, 33 percent if you really if you really need to but 25 percent or less is better I think that curve kind of shows a better picture right I'm gonna bring the camera over here we're gonna do a test on the bench I'm gonna just show you all right we're gonna just run a test on the bench I'm gonna put some power in the resistor and we're gonna see how hot it gets all right guys this uh, eval kit I have it's from BC. It's these guys are owned by Vache now. That's how long I've had this kit. And the funny thing is, you can't smell it. Uh, had it in storage, and actually at my mom's place, and she put mothballs in my stuff, so they would, <laughs> would get moths. And uh, yeah, so this guy sounds smells like mothballs. <laughs> so anyway, uh, in here, in each one of these bins, you can see. Three resistor sizes. I'm going to pull one of each of them out, and one of them's a three watt, one's a one watt, and one's a two watt. Look at the physical size that compares them. Isn't that nuts? I mean, that's just. I think that's kind of crazy. That looks like a one watt. That looks like a two watt. But really, I mean, look how much bigger a three watt is. It seems kind of nuts, right? All right, let's get a data sheet. Okay, guys, there's the data sheet. You can see right there the 1 watt, 2 watt, 3 watt. And that's the series right there. Viché owns them now. They used to be BC Components. I believe that was an English company. Now, here, we're going to just come up here to the bunch of information here. Let's just come up to the curve. All right, guys, right there is a curve that... I was showing you 100%. Here's the power percentage of power. Here's the temperature. So all the way up to 70C, which is pretty much common with most resistors, you can use 100% of the power. And then after that, it derates down to whatever the max power is, which, you know, 200C is a common temperature. So that's the first curve I was showing you. 
And then here's all the curves for the different resistors. Let's just come down to the 3 watt resistor. Okay, there's a curve for the 3 watt resistor. So if you put 3 watts in, it's going to go up to 180C. Plus your 20 degree you know, temperature in your room, 20 whatever degrees. So it's going to be hot. It's going to be maxed out. And if you look down here at 1 watt, we're 60 degree rise. So let's say if you only want to go up 40 degrees, then you're going to be down in here somewhere, three quarters of a watt. So that's important to know, guys. All right, here's our, our board. If you haven't seen the other videos, look, uh, check the link below and you can kind of see my setup. But basically, I have my two power supply rails here. There's only one cap on each side still. Or this can be my plus voltage, that's going to be my minus voltage rail. Okay, and... Maybe I'll tilt these up so you can read the values better. All right, and this one here is the temperature. And you see the temperature probes right here down on these resistors. I'm going to put it on the second one in, that temperature probe. And I'm going to use this little ball of monkey poo I've had around for 20 plus years, 30 years, whatever. I'm going to put that to hold it on that resistor if I can. Okay, that just kind of helps it hold hold down and then I'm going to go ahead and turn on the power and we'll just see how long it takes to heat up. Alright guys this meter here is going to show you the AC current coming in. This is a meter I reviewed a while back. Pretty nice little current probe. And here's the output voltages. I'm just going to flip on the power. You see them charge up 35 volts and here's the temperature here 34C. This guy's its input power is only about 111 milliamps. And you know what? Once the caps are charged, other than run these LEDs over here, it really shouldn't have to uh, be even this high. But because those resistors down there, you can see it's already up to 50C, 54C. So look, we're up to 60C. Now once you're up to 60C, that's too hot to really touch it very long without getting a little burn. So, uh, I mean, it's rising pretty fast. You can see that, 66, 60. Now, I've got that little monkey poo on that, so it's going to help spread the temperature out a little bit. So, if anything, that helps cool it. But, yeah, our voltage is just nice and steady. Uh, but we're up to 75C almost, 77C. So, there you go. That's a bad design in my estimation. I say we should not be getting anywhere near that hot. ADC is nuts. All right, I guess I proved my point. Should I let it get to 90C? You want to see how fast it goes up? Has anybody kept track of the time? <laughs> okay, we're over 90C, guys. That's way too hot. Okay, I'm going to turn off the power. Okay, I'll wait until it gets 100C. Nice, even 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, for those guys that like Fahrenheit, 100C or 213 degrees. Yeah, we're. 103 okay I'm turning off power and you can see how fast it discharges well wow, look how fast holy cow come on that's nuts there's no reason to discharge that quick all right guys so you can see why we don't need that much it's almost like they made a mistake like they put 1k's in there and they should have been 10k's and even 10k I, I don't even think you have to have 10Ks, but, you know, 10Ks would have made a lot more sense. Hey guys, I hope that was helpful, maybe educational. It's an important thing. I've seen cases where uh, products have gone out in the field, been returned a couple years later, started having failures because a resistor being derated 50%. So, it can come up and bite you. And it's just one of those things to be careful. Sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. And you know, I even had a resistor vendor tell me one time 
we had a discussion about this and I raised it up and they're like, oh yeah, 50% is good. Like, well, if you got a fan blowing on something and keeping it cool, maybe it is, but you know, if it's sealed up in a box, it's going to heat itself up, nowhere for the heat to go. It's not a good thing. So you also have to be aware of what kind of cooling you have. Yeah, if you have a fan blowing across the resistor, keeping it cool, then fine. But if it's sitting there self-heating itself, and you got other parts around it heating itself, you know, too, then it's just not going to last. And so, yeah, the cooling obviously has something to do with it. But understanding that resistor is going to heat itself up, and it's going to sit there and bake. You know, you go to all the trouble to pick the right transistors, the right capacitors, you know, poly, ceramic, tantalum, you know, do I want a MOSFET, do I want a GANFET, you know, BJT transistor maybe. And, you know, you go through all these decisions, all these choices, and then something dumb like a resistor comes up and bites you when, you know, it costs a couple cents to get a bigger resistor. So it's always good to derate your resistors, not worry about them, and, and also not let them heat up the rest of your circuit. Even if you have cooling, why throw that hot air from resistors into your circuit, especially on something like this, when all you're trying to do is to discharge those capacitors before someone touches them. You know, it's not like you're gonna turn off the power, reach in, grab your board real quick and get shocked. Especially if it's on the bench, you know better, right? Give it, your, give it a minute before, you know, if you have meters on it, especially if you have a bunch of meters, <laughs> you can watch your voltages and you can watch them dissipate. And when I was first in this test, there were signs and it was, you know, I'm busy thinking about filming, doing things, and, and there's still, I, I thought, wow, that's discharging pretty quick. And, you know, I thought, well, they're big resistors, okay, whatever, they spent the money, I bought them in the kit, put them in there, I didn't do the math and, you know, check the equations or the engineering behind it. I just built the kit and started testing. And uh, sure enough, uh, what I thought seemed like a fast discharge time and you know large resistor values for dis uh, for just discharging capacitors, it just I, there's something there kind of bothering me, and I I guess I should have paid attention, but I sure found it out soon when I started running the thing for a few minutes at a time. Could smell them cooking. All right, guys. Hey, thanks, patrons, for support. Thanks for everybody watching the channel and supporting it. And I'll get busy and come up the video on this capacitor thing, okay? So we can see how many capacitors put on our board and put it with our amplifier over there and get this thing running. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.